Hello, students. Um, in these sessions, I will introduce you virtual functions, what it is, and when to use it. So let's start. Um, first of all, um, the reason for using virtual functions is to achieve polymorphisms. Um, the polymorphism is mechanisms associating many meanings to one functions. Um, this means that depending on the context of your program, um, the same functions behave differently. Um, you might be confused about this concept. So let's study virtual functions and polymorphism using an example. Um, let's assume that you are designing classes for figures such as rectangle and circle. Each figure should have uh, specific features which are different to um, other figures. For example, a rectangle class should have member variables for representing height and weight. And for circle class, um, it should have a member variable for representing radius. They are unique features for a particular figure. But there should also be some common features because they are all figures. For example, um, in this example, um, all figures should have a member variable for storing um, center point and member functions draw to draw figure on your screen. So what is the best way of designing these um, figures, rectangle and circles? We learned inheritance last week. We can create figure um, class for storing all the common features of figures and design rectangle and circle class um, in a way that it inherits this figure class. So by doing this, uh, we can remove duplicate code as we learned in last week's sessions. Um, as shown in this slide, center point member variable and draw member functions are common features of rectangle and circle class. So we design parents class figure um, parents class is also known as a base class as we learned last week. And put these members, the center points and draw member functions to in this figure class. So if rectangle and circle class inherits this figure class, they will automatically inherit center point member variable and draw member functions. And because draw functions should have different instructions for circle and rectangle, uh, rectangle and circle class should redefine um, inherited draw member functions. So here the redefined member functions um, in rectangle class will be in bucket. And here the redefined member functions um, draw in circle class will be in bucket. So, um, so far, um, nothing is new. We study all these concepts, the inheritance, parent charge classes and redefinitions of member functions in derived class. Uh, we learned all these concepts in the last week. So nothing is new at the moment. Okay, so uh, figure class contains function that applies to all figure. So they, uh, in figure class, we put all the common features. Um, now assume that the figure class have a uh, center functions shown here that applies to um, all figures. 
city center function redraw the figure in the center of the screen. So the center first erase the figure and uses the draw uh, member functions to redraw the figures. Um, the complication starts here. Uh, which draw functions will be invoked here? Because if we go back to the previous slide, the circle and rectangle and figure, these three different classes all have draw member functions. So in this case, which draw member function will be invoked? Does draw member function in figure class will be invoked because um, the center function belongs to this figure class? Or does this draw functions invoked um, redefine in the rectangle class or circle class? So which draw function will be invoked here? Which one should be invoked? This, this is very complicated. Um, if you think a little bit about this one, in order to correctly redraw the square, the draw member functions redefined in the square class should be invoked. And to draw the functions in circle, class, um, the draw functions in the circle class should be invoked to correctly redraw the circle. Because the instructions for um, drawing circle and squares are different. So um, relevant draw functions should be invoked here to redraw the figures correctly. So this means that depending on the situations, um, the draw functions, um, the draw member function that uh, redefined in square or circle class should be invoked. Um, how can we make do that? How can we make so that the correct draw function will be invoked? Because the center uh, member function is defined in the figure class. Um, to make the situation more dramatic, uh, uh, we have designed a figure class which contains the common features of square and circle. Um, at some later point, assume that you want to add new kind of figure, triangle. So you design triangle class and make it um, inherit the figure class, just like a square and the circle class. So as a result, the triangle class also has a, also inherit the center functions and draw functions as well. Um, but in order for this inherited center functions um, operate correctly, the draw functions of triangle class should be invoked rather than the draw function in the figure class. Um, but at the time of writing the figure class, uh, we defined the figure class in previous slide, um, the draw function of the triangle class was not even uh, written and compiled. So, stay here. So how can the function center possibly work correctly for a triangle? Um, not that the compile do not know anything about the draw function in the triangle class. At the time of the center function in the figure class was compiled. Um, this diagram shows such complicated situations. Um, that explained it, that I explained to you regarding the center and draw functions in the previous slides. Um, as you can see here, figure library is compiled with two derived class, circle and rectangle. 
and they both have a uh, draw functions respectively. Um, the center function in the figure class uses um, these draw functions. Um, there is first problem occurs. Um, the center function in the figure class is confused about which draw function to call because there is uh, two draw functions. And at some later point, you are adding a new derived class, which is a triangle. And this triangle class also inherits the figure class as we um, talk about um, triangle class in the previous slide. And second problem occurs here. The draw functions of triangle class was not known at the time of writing these center functions in figure class. We did not, not read, the compiler did not know about this tri draw triangle. So at the time of writing these center member functions, because compiler um, did not know anything about this triangle class, um, the compiler could not link these draw functions to these draw functions defining the triangle. So, but as we discussed in the previous slide, in order to redraw the figure correctly, the relevant draw function should be invoked. So for example, if you want to redraw the circle, um, the draw function in the circle class should be invoked here. And for rectangle, the draw functions in the rectangle class should be invoked here. And if, if this function wants to redraw the triangle, um, the draw functions defined in triangle should be invoked here. But because of, as the problem two says, um, at, the, um, at the point of writing these center functions, um, the compiler did not know anything about this triangle. So compiler cannot link these draw functions to this um, draw function in the triangle. So so for that case, um, this function will not work correctly for the triangle, redrawing the triangle figures. So how can we solve such problems? How can we make the center functions in the figure class to invoke correct draw functions depending on the situations? Um, to solve this problem, you need to use virtual functions. You need to write um, the draw member function as a virtual function. If you make a function virtual, you're telling the compiler that you don't know how function is implemented and wait until this function is used in, in the program at runtime and ask compiler to get the implementations of the virtual functions from the object inst instance that is used in runtime. Um, the mechanism of waiting until runtime to determine the implementation of the functions is called uh, late binding or dynamic bindings. So this is a new terms, new concept, a late binding means um, waiting, a late bindings means um, ask compilers to wait until runtime to determine the implementation of the functions. We'll um, come back to this late binding in um, later slides. So we can solve the previous two problems using a virtual functions and using a mechanisms uh, called um, late binding. So let me explain you more about the um, virtual functions and a late binding with a different example. 
and using the source code. So in this example, um, you're developing a record keeping program for an automotive part store. Using this program, you want to keep track of sales, but at this point, you don't know all types of sales. Uh, for example, at first, there will be only regular retail sales, but in later, um, there may be different types of sales, such as a discount sale and mail order sales with a shipping charge. So you want to develop a program for computing daily gross sale and calculate the largest and smallest sales of the day and the average sale for the day. And in order to derive such values, you need to compute bills for each type of sales first. Um, but because you cannot anticipate all types of sales at current points, um, you need to make a virtual function for a computing bill. So this example also has the same problems as we discussed in the previous slides. Um, so many of the functions for computing the bills will not be added until later when you decide what types of sales you will be dealing with. So you, you don't know what kind, what types of sales uh, will be available in the future at this point. So you cannot develop the program um, anticipating all these times at this point. So that is the reason why you have to use a virtual function and use a late binding mechanisms because you don't know uh, what types of cells exist in the futures. So let's write program code for this program. Uh, let's write a um, code for this program. So we first define sale class and we place all common features of sales and all types of cell will inherit this cell class. So as you can see here, cell class has a price member variable, obviously, and it has a get price and saving and bill member functions. Note that the bill member function start with a virtual keyword. By placing a virtual keyword like this, um, you can make the member function as virtual. So here only bill is a virtual function and get price and savings are non-virtual functions. And obviously these two functions are constructor because it has a same name um, as a class name. And this is the implementations of the savings member functions. Um, the cell class has a savings member function. Um, the implementations of saving member function is this one. Um, this bill function core expression will invoke the functions defined in the sales class. So this one will invoke uh, this bill member functions defined in the sales class. But this bill function core expressions um, uses the function definitions of the given objects class types. So we are getting the object um, of type sales class as a first argument. And by referencing this object, it calls the bill member functions. So at this point, we do not know which bill uh, member functions 
uh, will be invoked. Um, it really depends on the arguments we argument passed to these functions. Depending on these arguments, the different build function will be invoked here. Um, you will understand what I mean by this if you see the result of this program output in the later slides. And this is the class for the discount cell. The class name is discount cell. It inherits the cells class. So cell is a base class and discount cell is a derived class. Um, so it inherits all members of cells class, including the build uh, virtual functions. Um, here build was declared as virtual, um, just like a base class. Um, so build functions is virtual functions in this console as well. Um, but because the build functions was declared virtual in the base class. So if we go back to the slide, so as you can see here, build function in cell class declared as a virtual. And because build fun functions uh, was declared virtual in the base class, so build functions automatically becomes virtual function in the derived class as well. So in this example, you explicitly specify virtual keyword, but even you do not specify the virtual keyword here, if you delete this um, keyword, even though you delete this keyword, um, the build functions is virtual in this um, discount cell because it was a virtual function in the base class. So it really doesn't matter whether you put the virtual keyword here or not. Um, the build functions um, will be uh, considered as a virtual function um, regardless whether you put the virtual keyword here or not. But it is recommended to add virtual keyword explicitly like this example because it improves the readability of your program. And this is the implementations of build member functions um, of discount cell class. And recall that this is the savings member function in cell class. If we pass the objects of discount cell type of class as a first argument to this savings uh, member functions, then this build uh, function call expression will invoke the build member function defined in the sales class, but this build function call expressions will invoke the build member functions defined it in this council class. So these core expressions, if we pass um, the discount cell objects here, this build function call expressions will invoke these functions. So this one will not invoke the build functions defined in this say, class. Um, it will invoke this one. So um, this diagram shows uh, what's happening. Um, class cell has a saving member function and it uses a uh, build member functions. And cell class also have a build member function. And this build member function is virtual functions because we um, specify the virtual keyword here. And because build is uh, declared as a virtual function, it is bounded at runtime. So this means that it is not bounded in compile time. So when you compile this um, sales class, the compiler will not 
combined this bill function core expression with this bill member function defining uh, the cell class. It waits, um, wait, it waits until um, runtime to decide uh, which bill um, member functions to use. So in our previous example, the build function in this cell will be invoked here because we pass the um, discount sales um, object to the saving class. So this build core expression will bound to this discount sales build member functions at runtimes. And this is called a late binding. Um, note that at the time of writing this saving function in cell class, we even had no idea of this cell. But making bill as a virtual function, we can invoke bill function defined in this cell through saving member functions. So this is the power of the virtual functions and a late binding. So let's see the example um, of virtual function using a demo code. Okay, so this is the demo code. Let me compile this program and run it. So this program produces this output. Uh, this so this program produces this output. Uh, if you look at this program, there is a uh, two class, class A and class B. And class B inherits class A. So class B is a derived class and class A is a base class. And if you look at the class A, there is a two member functions. One is a virtual functions named print v. And this function just prints um, this sentence. A class print v function is called. And this one, print member function is a non-virtual functions. And similar to print v function, it prints this sentence. Um, the difference is that this one print print v and this one print just this um, word without the v. And in class b, um, it also inherits the print v and print, and it re redefines it. So in print v member functions of class b, it prints this line. So b class print v function from is called, this line will be printed. And for this one, this line will be called printed. And if you look at the um, main functions, we first declare the type pointer types of variable um, class A. Class A type of pointer variable is declared here. And we declare the class B types of variable here. And we assign um, B um, class type of objects addressed to this uh, pointer, which is a class A type of pointer. Um, note that as we learned in the last week, this is syntactically correct. Um, some of you might think this is illegal because this object is a class type B and this variable is class type A. A and 
because these two variable um, has a different type, you might think that this is illegal, but as we learned last week, um, this is perfectly fine, syntactically correct, because um, B is a derived class of A. So you are always fine to assign the objects of derived class type to the variable of the variable type um, base class type of variable. So this is perfectly fine because we are assigning the derived class of type to a base class type of variable. And if you print, if you call this print and print v member function using this um, variable, um, some interesting things happens here. Um, if you look at this code, because PTRA is a type of class A, um, you might think that this print member function and print free member functions, um, this the class A's print and class A's print free function will be invoked. So this one, because PTRA is a class type of A. But if you look at the um, actual output of this program, um, the output is very strange because um, the first one, the print member functions, it prints this line, which means that the print member function defined in class A is invoked. But for this one, print free member functions defined in class B is invoked because it prints this one. Why this um, core expressions invoke the class A's member function and this core expressions cause the um, B classes member functions? What makes these two different uh, output result? This is um, because print v is a virtual function and print is a non-virtual function. And be um, because this one print member function is a non-virtual function, compiler um, binds this print member functions at compile time by referencing the type of this variable. Okay, one more time. Um, because this print member functions is non-virtual functions, um, this print member functions bind at compile time. The compiler binds this print member functions um, at compile time based on the type of this variable. And because this type of variable is class A type, compiler binds these member functions, core expressions, the print member functions to class A's um, print member functions at compile times. So that is the reason why um, class A's um, print member function is called here, invoked here. But this print v is a virtual functions. Um, as we learned in the previous slide, um, virtual functions uses a mechanism called a late binding, um, which is a technique of waiting until runtime to determine the implementation of our functions. So because this print v is of member functions, compiler do not bind um, these member functions at compile time 
it waits until runtime to determine the implementation of our functions. So, so here compiler waits and at runtime, it checks the actual value of value stored in this variable. So, it, so that, is, that is the difference. So here, the compiler referenced the type of this variable, which is A, and use that um, type to bind these member functions at compile time. But here, compiler do not bind this member function at compile time. It waits until runtime. And when this function is invoked, it checks the actual value stored in this variable and using and by looking at the type of that uh, value, it binds this member function uh, respectively. In this example, because PTRA holds this object, which is a type B, and because this uh, object is type B, uh, type class B, B's print free uh, member function is invoked here. So that is a late binding. And that is the difference between the non virtual function and virtual functions behavior. So compiler treat non virtual function and virtual function differently. Hope you understood this one. If you are not clearly understand about this concept, please ask me uh, through email. This is a very important concept and you need to know these concepts for your final exam. Okay, let's go back to the slides. Okay, let's look at one more um, example code. So why we should use a virtual functions? We, we are using a virtual functions for the uh, polymorphisms. Okay, so uh, let me compile this program. Okay, so if you look at this program, um, this demo code explains you about the um, concepts of polymorphisms. Um, we learned that polymorphism is a technique associating many meanings to one functions. So we we talk about the um, polymorphism in the previous slides. This demo code explains this that concepts. So if you look at here, there is one class, another class, and another class. So there is a three class. And this one is a cell class, and it has a one member functions print. It just prints cell. And this one, um, the class name is a uh, discount cell and in, it in, inherits this cell class. And it override the uh, print member functions, the, the inherited print member functions. And it prints this line. And this class name is an uh, online cell and it also inherits this cells class. And it also, um, redefine this print member function, it prints this line. And note that this print member functions are virtual functions. And there is a one function defined here, test, and it receive uh, one argument, um, sales class type of arguments, and it 
reference these arguments to print, um, call the print member functions. And if we look at this uh, main function, we declared one sales class type of variable and one discounts cell types of variable and one online sales class type of variable. And we pass each of these variable to these test functions. And this test function is defined here. What, what it does is it just call these print member functions using the given argument. So if we compile this program, what's the um, expected output? What, what is the expected output of this program? So because we are calling test three times, um, the print function will be invoked three times, obviously. But which print function will be invoked? Um, we can, we may guess that, um, print member function in cell class will be invoked because the argument type is cell. So some people may think that expected output is a cell, 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 cell three, three times because we call it test three times. Let's learn, run this program and see that. As Um, as we can see here, um, sale, discount sale, and online sale. Um, this indicates that um, the first core of these test functions, uh, we use the uh, print member function defined in sale. For the second test, um, function core here, um, print member function in discount cell class is invoked. And for the um, third test function core, the print member function is defined in online cell class is invoked. Um, as you can see here, this print is a one functions because its its name is print, so it's, it's print. But as you can see here, depending on the situations, depending on these arguments, um, this print function behave differently. The first in the first function call, it prints this one, and second function query print this one and third function query print this one. So even though this print is one function, it behaves differently. So that is um, called polymorphisms. So polymorphism is a mechanism associating many meaning to one function. So here we are um, associating many meanings to these print functions. And this is possible because of the virtual functions and uh, late binding mechanisms. So this um, compiler do not bind this print function core at compile time, it waits until runtime to determine the implementations of the functions um, based on the value of this argument. So depending on um, 
the value of this argument, the different, different print map function is invoked. And because we are passing three different type of uh, arguments, this one is sales and this one is discount sale and this one is a uh, online sale. Uh, uh, different print member functions is invoked. And to remind you that you don't need to put the virtual keyword here. You don't need to do this. Um, program will produce the same result. Let me compile this one and double check it. Compile is fine if you re even you remove this virtual keyword and it results the same output. And because virtual keyword explicitly specified here, the inherited um, this print memory function automatically becomes the um, virtual function as we talked about in the previous slides. But it is recommend that you explicitly specify virtual keyword here. This will improve the readability of your program. Okay, that is the concepts of polymorphisms. Let's go back to the slides. So um, let, let me summarize about virtual functions and polymorphisms. Um, the virtual functions implement a late binding. This tells compiler to wait until the function is used um, in the program at runtime. Um, so at compile time, we do not know which function will be actually invoked at runtime. That, um, that really depending on the value stored um, at runtime, as we saw in the example code. So at runtime, when you execute the program, depending on the calling objects, um, different function will be invoked um, as we just saw through the demo code. Um, this is uh, known as a polymorphisms. And the polymorphism is a mechanism associating many meanings to one functions. So this is a very important OP principle. Um, please study this polymorphism and a late binding concept and make sure that you properly understand this concept. Um, you need this for your final exam. Um, before concluding this session, let me distinguish the terms overreadings and redefined it. When you change the definitions of uh, virtual functions in derived class, we say that you overridden the functions. But when you change the non-virtual function in the derived class, we say that you redefined it, the functions. So the meaning of these two terms, the overridden and redefined are same in that uh, the function changes at the derived class, but depending on which functions, whether it is a virtual or non-virtual functions, you use the term overridden and redefined it. It is not important to distinguish these two terms you could make C++ program without knowing this, um, but you must aware that the C++ compiler treat um, differently for virtual and non-virtual function as we discussed in, the, in these sessions. So that's it for these sessions. Um, in the following sessions, um, let's talk uh, more about uh, virtual functions.
Okay. Um, see you in the following sessions.